The Apache Point Observatory in Las Cruces, New Mexico, is built of lightweight materials with simple working parts. Here we go. Good. It is also we remote controlled by Jack Burns, an astronomer at the University of New Mexico over 100 miles away. Burns sees Apache Point as a prototype for a lunar observatory controlled by astronomers on Earth. But he also has a grander vision for astronomy on the moon. The moon, for our purposes in astronomy at least, is a dead world, geologically speaking. The ground is extremely stable. There is uh, eight orders of magnitude less geological energy uh, on the moon than on the Earth. Now that's important to be able to do what's called optical interferometry, to be able to take several individual optical telescopes, link them together as a single very powerful telescope to look out at the cosmos which, with extremely high resolution. We can't do that from the Earth, not only because of the atmosphere, but also because the ground is, uh, is very um, unstable on the Earth. An array of optical telescopes several miles in diameter could yield fantastic resolving power, up to a million times better than anything possible on Earth. Looks like the but even the modest lunar observatory could perform valuable studies. Once again, looks like most of the media. Yeah. If, if we had a lunar-based telescope, then we'd be able to zoom in uh, by several factors of 10 more than what we've got here and really look in detail at where these stars are forming. One of the real exciting parts, though, of uh, these new telescopes will be the opportunity to potentially detect other planets in uh, other parts of our galaxy. That's the first step in being able to see whether or not life on other planets and other worlds is a real possibility. For all our probing of the night sky, we have yet to find a single planetary system like our own. Observatories on the moon will join the ongoing search, scanning the heavens for telltale signs of planets orbiting a distant star, cryptic but intelligent signals that will tell us, you are not alone. The moon holds a grand vision for the future, full of hope and promise. But for now, in the late 20th century, we remain earthbound. How do we get back? I think our approach to return to the moon cannot be and should not be thought of as, as one big mission. What we really should think of it as is cre recreating an infrastructure, a transportation infrastructure, like an interstate highway that we once possessed. We had all those elements. They could have been modified and upgraded a little bit, with today's technology, but we, the United States, owned a lunar transportation system. We know how to do it. Um, once we recreate it, we will have the capability to do any number of missions at relatively small additional cost, and indeed, we will have much of the capability we need to go forward to Mars. During Apollo, each launch was separate and unique, each a one-shot expedition. Lunar advocates propose a different approach. First to return to the moon will be satellites and robotic craft to map minerals and resources and determine the site for the first lunar outpost. The first crew would be equipped for a stay of several weeks. Their landing would follow that of a cargo ship containing a habitat, life support, and science lab. Teams of specialists would rotate periodically. Geologists would explore. Engineers would develop new technologies. Construction robots would be controlled by operators miles away, perhaps even on Earth. Direct 
sparing human workers the dangers of prolonged exposure to the harsh environment, robots would assemble the building blocks of a lunar base. Environmental engineers would master the art of recycling precious air and water in closed-loop systems. Manufactured directly from lunar soil, huge solar panels would convert light into electricity. Solar power collected on the moon could even be beamed to an energy-hungry Earth to become the first extraterrestrial import. The moon might also provide another energy resource. Helium-3, a rare isotope present in minute amounts on Earth, but mineable in the lunar soil. In the next century, scientists hope to develop new fusion technology for more efficient nuclear power. Reactors fueled by helium-3 imported from the moon could provide clean, safe nuclear power. Commerce between Earth and the Moon could build financial independence for a lunar colony. Eventually, humans would bring the seed of life to the Moon, creating habitats where plants recycle water and oxygen, just as they do on Earth. Some say a lunar colony could ultimately become self-sufficient as new forms of farming and space agriculture are developed. In a distant future, some see the moon as a welcome oasis for workers assigned to duty on space stations and as a supply post for missions to Mars and beyond. Today, not a single official dollar has been committed to this vision. To some, it may even seem far-fetched. But stranger things have come to be. In the 1930s, a film called Trip to the Moon depicted one man's vision of the future. Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, a Russian schoolteacher, had dreamed of space travel all his life. A team of daring explorers traveled by multi-stage rocket. Okay, the first stage was very smooth, and this one is smoother. They mastered the control of complex technology. Houston, Apollo 11, uh, Star 40 has just disappeared now in the uh, section. Enjoyed the thrills of weightlessness. Precisely on course, they approached the moon with trepidation. Then, they landed in an unusual vertical configuration. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. APA at a descent. We copy you down, Eagle. Human intelligence may fulfill itself in space or discover its limits there. Are there limits to technological progress? Are there limits to our imagination? Perhaps this is the one great lesson we have learned from going to the moon. 
given the courage to dream and the will to achieve, we can control our future. I'm going to step off the limb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you have enjoyed your visit to Tranquility Base Museum and that you found the historical presentation inspiring. Should you find yourself pining for those early days of lunar exploration, just remember, even though the moon has become a familiar and comfortable place, the frontier is still out there, just beyond our reach, just beyond our wildest imagination. In next week's Space Age, how scientists use monitoring systems in space to study and analyze the Earth. Next tonight on Discovery, Explains.